Hey, it's a great day. I'm Mike Current, Energizer, and today is day 83 on the Continental Divide Trail. Yeah, so let's do this. So for today, today's a zero day in the town of Rawlings. And because I did most of my town chore days yesterday after coming into town, today was more of a relaxation day. I spent almost the entire day working on videos, uh, processing them, uploading them, editing them. I'm still catching up from having a broken phone. So that's what today was involved with. And at the end of the day, Knee Deep and Mash, they hosted a kind of a barbecue burgers and beer with other through hikers that uh, are staying in the hotel. And we just had a wonderful time uh, talking and just, just sharing, you know, <laughs> stories. So it was, it was really good. So for today, what I would like to do with this video is something I have never done before, and that is interview another hiker. I've never done that, but this hiker is very special. And so I wanted to do it. Uh, for this hiker, I knew this person by reputation even before arriving on trail. I mean, amongst through, through hikers, you kind of find out who's who in the zoo. And I knew this person by reputation even before I started the CDT. And then I found out we were starting on the same day. And I got excited about that. And if you've watched my videos, you know who I'm talking about. We started the same day. We started on the mile one we did together. And we have hiked on and off throughout the trail. And we're about the halfway point. And I have gotten to know this hiker. He's an outstanding hiker. Uh, he's one of the most interesting people you can meet on trail. And Having gotten to know him, he is one of the nicest individuals you can possibly meet on trail. So it was real my honor to be able to interview him. He agreed to do that, and I hope you enjoy this. And of course, I am talking about Logman. So hey, Logman, please tell me a little bit about your yourself. You know, which, which, what is your background? So my name is Sean, I'm from New Hampshire. I go by the name of Logman, and this is Larry the Log. I'm an Iraqi vet, and I'm from New Hampshire. Now, obviously, hiking with a log is quite unusual. So how did the whole log thing come about and you becoming Logman? So when I was hiking the Whites, I was training for something, and we have 48 peaks in New Hampshire, and I did them pretty quickly. I did all 48 in five weeks carrying the log and people took notice right away and were wondering the 21 questions about what type of wood is it, how much does it weigh, what's its name. And along with carrying the log, I became log man and they wanted to name the log. And the first person that responded said, name it Larry. And I said, okay. So they all became Larry and uh, they asked what I was training for and what I was raising money for. And that's when it hit me. I just figured I would attach something to it, a charity. And in the 24 hours, I was hoping people could donate per mile. That's how it started. But then after that, it gained attention. And then they asked me in an interview, what's next? And I said, probably the AT. And I just figured I'd attach a charity to it. And being an Iraqi vet, I figured I'd do it for veterans. And it had a bigger turnout than I ever could imagine, ever could have imagined. It raised ten thousand dollars and then after that i just figured i'll do the other two trails and i'll attach a charity i'll do it um i'll make it all public and i'll do direct links it won't even go through me and when people heard that people were very supportive they thought it was amazing and it, it's raised some some money for some great charities the at was for veterans the pct was for children saint jude's children's hospital and then this one is in honor of my grandmother who had alzheimer's Obviously hiking with a log, there are challenges that you have to face that other through hikers don't. Kind of go through some of those and then how you deal with those. There are a few challenges. So the snow creates a big challenge for me when there's a steep slope. 
um, carrying it, I'll, I'll hold it across both shoulders and I'll switch side to side. But let's say the slope is on this side, I will have the ice axe in this hand and I'll hold it in this arm. But when this arm gets tired, it'll get pins and needles. Every couple minutes I gotta switch and I'll walk across. Well, when I have to switch and I have the ice axe in this hand and I'm holding in this, I'm not gonna walk like this across my body. So whether it's snowing, raining, windy, I have to stay in place for a couple minutes and wait for this arm to get tired. Um, another example would be river crossings. I know some people don't hike with poles, but the thing with hiking with a log and not having poles, every single time I would sink into the snow, every step would be all legs. It's, there's no help from the upper body to take any pressure or alleviate any of that from, from my legs. Um, and then down trees, if you have to bushwhack going shoulder to shoulder, it's going to be extremely wide. Um, and then the third is the backpack. Um, I can only roll it. I have to roll it all the way down to my shoulder blades or else the log will hit. Uh, so I can't use a hard backpack. I have to use Hyperlite and I really like that brand. So it works out perfect. But in doing so, I also can only carry so much food. So luckily I can put down some miles, but I can probably only carry 110, 115 miles worth of food before I have to go into town. And whatever I can't fit in my backpack, whatever I can't roll all the way down to my shoulders, I can't hold on to it. So the PCT last year, everything had to go around my backpack. So snowshoes, the ice axe, the crampons, the micro spikes. And then even when I had to carry the bear canister, if you can imagine, I had to carabiner clip it to the outside of my backpack. And what I would do is I would just take a grocery bag, put it in that carabiner, clip it to the Y part of the, the backpack, the, the Y strap, and it would just be dangling outside. It wouldn't have any food in it. I would have my food bag in my bag, but then at the end of the night, I would have to take all the food out, put it in the bear canister, do that but it, it created a lot of challenges and that's only a couple there are a lot of things that that people will oh, suggest boy. to me and i'll be like that oh, wouldn't work they, they've they've even tried maybe putting it on my backpack so i don't have to hold it and then i could have poles which sounds good in theory but if you were to try it what happens is it creates more pressure for the straps to pull on the traps to push back and i really it creates a divot i have uh you probably can't see it now, but I would have scar tissue from the AT because I wasn't putting band-aids on and it was creating a laceration. That skin, it would just keep going back and forth when I switched shoulder to shoulder. And just taking the skin right off. It would just create a cut, a laceration that I didn't realize. And by the time it healed on itself, it created scar tissue. And then on the PCT, I have pictures too. I should send them to you. It, you could see literally where the log would sit. You would see the bone and you would see the trap and it would just be a divot. And it was, it would have to be, it was just temporary. And I knew it was only temporary, but it would create all these knots in your shoulders. So a lot of hikers assumed that I would have these big shoulders and, you know, big upper body, but it's really just weight on the shoulders. So it's only creating, it's only impeding blood flow yeah. and it would just create knots. And at the end of the night, I would just lay in my tent and just try to rub my shoulders. I would have to put numbing cream on and put on a smile afterwards. Cause it was, <laughs> it, it really, it really took its toll. I think the snow almost took me out, but I mean, if you have a charity that you're really passionate about and you have a, a strong why, a strong purpose, that, that really quitting wasn't in the vocab for me. And it was just really tough. I, my body was taking a lot, a lot of beatings from just down trees, all the body mechanics of trying to go up and over and not having both arms to hold on to things. And I mean, that's just off the top of my head, but there's a lot of, a lot, a lot of, of challenges, a lot of challenges, especially to do down trees and bushwhacking and everything where you could think, it would be helpful to use both hands Yeah. on the AT. If, if, if the, for the people that have hiked the AT wildcat a alone, you're going 1500 feet in one mile and you're really using both hands. So in those situations going up rock chimneys or whatever they call them, I would have to take it off the shoulder. I would have to put it up, use both hands, pick it up or, you know, go from there or just, you know, hold it on my shoulder and try to do it with one arm. But knock on Larry. <laughs> knock on Larry. <laughs> it's been good so far. You've been doing it. You've been doing so, it. So far, so, so good. Almost a triple crown. <laughs> yep. Yeah.
for all my viewers, if they want to learn more about you and the charity that you are through hiking the Continental Divide Trail for, how would they get in touch with you and what, they, what can they do to support you? So I will take the link and I make a QR code and attach it to Instagram, which is Larry the Log, and right underneath is the direct link. It's always a direct link, it never goes through me. But if someone doesn't have Instagram for that, I would always have the QR code. I haven't linked it to anything yet, but maybe I could give you the link if you paste it at the bottom of this video or something. I don't know. You yeah. don't have to, but I'm yeah. just. It's it's hard to figure out a way, or if anyone has any idea, I'm trying to figure out a way to either make a LarryTheLog.com where it's like I'm always a log for a cause is what I would want to call it in yeah. whatever I'm doing because I know not everyone has Instagram, but the QR code for for that was the only way to do it or it's a direct link, but they would have to be nearby me to do the QR code. Yeah. But if you Google Larry the Log, they've written some nice articles about it. And then the Instagram <laughs> is, is always the charity. So I picked the charities based on, so the AT when I first started and I got that idea to raise money for something, I thought what I represent and what I'm about is veterans. So having that big turnout for veterans, I thought, even though I don't have kids, I thought the PCT St. Jude's children is something that a lot of people get behind because not only is it helping the children, it's helping the parents. Yeah. So whether or not I have children, I can empathize with that or sympathize with that. And, and then I did veterans children. I just thought to round it all off, you know, my grandmother having Alzheimer's, it does go for everyone, but it's an honor my grandmother to think yeah. I'm triple crowning, gives me a more sense of purpose. Uh, to do it for that and it kind of rounds off all of them but if i keep going from here the what's next question there'll always be a, a you know a mountain or a trail to climb and i'll always attach something there's cancers out there there's ms there's cancers anything that helps feed children i'll always raise money for something there's always going to be a trail out there that i want to do there'll always be something i want to raise money for feels good doing it and I think it would be a missed opportunity if I do all this and it doesn't raise money for something, you know what I mean? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. It just gives it, I mean, it, it's so unusual that, <laughs> that it, and, and it draws so much attention, obviously, on the trail yes. that it just, yeah, and, and, and people want to get, people want to get behind it. Yeah. So I will include your QR code at the end Appreciate of the video. Appreciate that, yeah. So people can, but if can they go don't, directly yep. to it. Yep. So, perfect. perfect. Yeah. So that was Logman. If you're interested in supporting Logman and his cause, please press pause, go to the QR code that is on the screen, and you'll be able to donate directly to his cause and find out more about what he is doing and what he's, he's trying to support. But absolutely, absolutely wonderful, wonderful individual. Uh, and my pleasure to be able to spend time with him and and interview him uh, for you. So that's the end of day 83. Tomorrow is day 84. We are back on trail. We're gonna be out there early. Yeah, we're gonna be hitting the Great Basin hard. See you then.